Mr Chair, thank, thank you. And I want to thank all, all colleagues who have made a contribution. I will endeavour to respond briefly to the questions that have been raised and then return, as I said I would, to uh, Clause 23. Firstly, in terms of uh, the Principles Clause, uh, the important uh, fact to, factor to note here is at the beginning of the Principles Clause, which um, this needs to be seen as both a, a, an umbrella uh, but also um, it links to other elements of the bill as well. So clause 4 one says, in performing its role as trustee of the town belt, the council must, and then it outlines the things it must do, and it must recognise and provide for the protection, and it must have particular regard to the principles. So it doesn't have wiggle room in that sense. What the council, and bear in mind this is a bill put forward by the Wellington City Council, what the council were clear about was that that the principles couldn't be so tight as to enable them not to actually run the city, not to be able to do the things that they need to do within the city. And so it is uh, an absolute obligation to have regard to those principles, but then they are worded in such a way as that they can then be operable principles in terms of how, uh, how the uh, town belt is managed. In terms of the relationship with Mana Whenua, to pick up the, the comment of my colleague Reno Tavakatni, this is where the management plan becomes the critical element, because the management plan is what governs on a, on a decade by decade basis how the town belt works. And in that, there is a relationship with Mana Whenua over the management of the town belt. So the principles are a high level, uh, they have enough flexibility in them to allow the operation of the town belt to occur, but it is through the management plan that uh, that finds itself in operation. We are making legislation here for perpetuity, and the management plan is what guides us in between times. And I think it's important that we don't try and invest everything about the town belt's uh, operations and running in this legislation. The management plan is, is a critical element. Uh, for Mr O'Rourke's benefit, um, as far, oh, sorry, the other question Mr Nash raised, this is not a charitable trust, this is a statutory trust. And actually the word trust is used in the deed, which in itself has led to the concept of a trustee, but it doesn't suffer from, from the limitations that uh, other types of charitable trusts would. Uh, for Mr O'Rourke's concern uh, around why it's eight hectares, um, I think that's because it's 20 acres. And I think that's a, a number that the council <laughs> has used uh, to define what they would deem to be an acceptably small percentage of the 400 um, hectares that we have and the 520 to 540 we will have. I don't think it's a, a number divined anything more than being an acceptably small number relative to the size of the town belt. Uh, in terms of, of the question around whether or not it's, uh, it's foreseen as a prohibition, that will be a matter for the council. Uh, what they were trying to get across in this was that they didn't want people to believe there was 20 years followed by another 20 years followed by another 20 years without any uh, uh, recourse to pausing and stopping and thinking whether or not a lease should be granted over and over again. Whether or not that would amount to a prohibition will be a decision for them and not something that I, I'm sorry to say I can shed any light on uh, for the member. Uh, Mr Chair, I want to use my remaining time to talk about Clause 23. Clause 23, as introduced in this bill, did create some exceptions to the way in which the Public Works Act would apply to the Wellington Town Bell. It has never been the intention of the Wellington City Council to exempt the Town Belt from the Public Works Act. What originally came into this House did add in a couple of extra provisions. After consultation between the Wellington City Council and the Government, we now have an amended Clause 23. That amended Clause 23 is the status quo. It means that the Public Works Act operates alongside the town belt as it has up until this point. There are rights of objection for the City Council. There is a process for compensation. We haven't added to that, and in the minority report I made very clear in the Labor Party's minority report, we would rather have stuck with the original Clause 23. But ultimately, this is a local bill, and the Wellington City Council has made its decision that it believes the status quo should be where we are now. I do think that's a bit of a lost opportunity to show just how special and unique the town belt was, but I do respect the fact that this is, as Mr Foster Bell has mentioned, about uh, the particular way in which the town belt sits in the city and what purposes it may have from time to time be used. Can I say this, Mr Chair? I would hope that governments looking at the town belt would be very judicious in their use of the Public Works Act and would actually attempt to avoid 
um, its use where at all possible and find alternatives that don't require the town belt to be taken. But it was never the intention of the Wellington City Council to, uh, to not have the Public Works Act apply to the town belt. Just very briefly, Grant Mr Robinson. Chair, um, the, 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 the change that was um, that was desired in, in, the, in the original Clause 23 around compensation, I do accept was complicated uh, and I think would have been quite difficult to implement, but there are still provisions for compensation in this. But I want to make absolutely clear to those who are listening into this that in no way does the Clause 23 that we will be passing uh, tonight um, diminish the protection that the Wellington Town Belt has, it simply enshrines the status quo. Mr Chair, as this will be my last call in the committee stage. I do want to thank all um, colleagues who've, um, all colleagues, well, I could go on, um, uh, all colleagues from all sides of the House for their strong support of this piece of legislation. We are doing a very good thing for Wellington here, and, and, we, will, and we can't build houses on it, Mr Twyford, that's the point. So um, we, as a parliament, should be proud that we've played our contribution in keeping Wellington Town Belt uh, protected for the future generations of the city. I Mr. call uh, Dennis O'Rourke.